Mm. And that's because it, it's something that uh, has happened historically. Yeah, yeah. Which is a writing off of debts. Yeah. Uh, there's actually one of the... Well, if, you, if, you, if you've been to the forum in Italy and, and taken a look at the, uh, the fresh, fresh years that are cut into the stone there, one of them is of the burning of the books of debt which is a regular activity in pre-capitalist societies of actually writing off the debt completely and liberating people who've been put into debt slavery beforehand. If you hadn't had that escape valve, none of those societies would have lasted. OK, well, tell us how it could work as you're proposing it. Whose debts are you writing off? Well, you have to see whether debt is a good or bad thing. And debt, in some sense, is definitely a good thing because rising debt is what actually fundamentally finances investment increase in productivity, new technologies, the iPads of the world and so on, fundamentally are financed by rising debt levels. That's a good aspect of debt. The negative side is when we borrow the money to gamble on rising asset prices. And that's what we've been doing globally, encouraged by the banks to gamble on rising okay. share prices, rising house prices. So I want to buy, borrow a million pounds because of this fabulous idea that is going to be a new technology, a new innovation, yep. and society will benefit from yep. it. Good. Yeah. I want to borrow a million pounds because I want to gamble it on other financial instruments. Bad. That's right. But what, if you look at the, the form of the good bit, in America's economy, for example, that seems to be something which is sustainable with the debt level of something like about 50% or 70% of one year's GDP, whereas the current level of debt in America peaked at 300% of GDP. It's about five times, four to five times the level of government debt. But that's not all bad debt. Some of that is, an awful say, lot of that, for example, in the United States, as we know, hmm. is people wanting to own a house and, to, and in order to do so, taking out a mortgage. Yes, but the thing is, what they've been caught up in, and that has caused a bubble in house prices. There's no denying now that there's been a house price bubble, and the cause of it was actually borrowing money in the first place. Without the house price bubble, they could be back with a 75% level of debt. OK, but so where we are now, hmm. Are you saying that you write off the mortgages, the debts of people like you and me? Yes. Even people who can afford to pay? We have to look at the situation we're in and say, what do we face if we continue trying to honour debts that we now know should never have been extended in the first place? What do we face? The best example of that is Japan. And Japan is a far more cohesive society than anywhere else on the planet, really. And they have been in a 20-year slump where, where the rate of growth has been lower than their population growth and they're having rising unemployment even with a falling population. Now if we look at that in OECD nations we face two decades of that. So what I'm talking about, yes of course this is an extreme change but it's basically admitting something which should be obvious to everybody on now. Okay. The credit system has failed. Okay but, but in terms of what the solution is and we can get into mm. the details yeah. of, of, of why you think the eco economic model has all been wrong but if you look at the solution you're saying mm. basically write off the debts of Anyone who owns a mortgage? No. No, I, I would... You, there is a certain level of debt which is necessary for such things as obviously business investment, but also there's a, a proportion of people who wish to own their own homes. And if we go back historically and see what level of debt that that involved in terms of the ratio to the GDP, well, then my own country of Australia, for example, that level of debt was about 10% of GDP. Now, it's since risen to 100% of GDP. Now, fully, most of that extra 90%, simply finance the rise in house prices itself. It's a bubble. Okay. But somebody in, in, under your solution is coming in and saying that's a good debt, that's a bad debt. No, I don't think we can't do it. If we try to do it on an individual basis, we'll be here forever and we'll feed lawyers okay. more than we Who's making the, the decision about the broad sweep? That's why it has to be an intelligent modern jubilee. We can't sort of say worthy borrower, unworthy borrower. Somebody who should... We have to have okay. a systemic approach because fundamentally households did not make the bad decisions. The bad okay. decisions were made by the banks to lend in the first but place. Accepting what you identify as the problem, in trying to understand what the solution yeah. is, this systemic approach, mm. who, who, what is deciding in this new system that we're replacing the current bad one with, mm. who's deciding who gets the debt write-off and who doesn't? Well, I wouldn't say it's a kind of individual choice between one individual and another. It has to be a systemic process by which we reduce the level of debt finance money in the economy and increase the amount of government created money because we have two sources of money in a capitalist economy the banks can create money by extending loans the government creates money by running a deficit now we had back in the early sixties the ratio of government created money to the overall money supply was about fifteen percent it's fallen so far that we've got an entirely debt based system which is driven speculation. Sure. We need to create the government money to balance out the... Cre so I'd, I'd okay. actually have a government creation of money system approach to try to rebalance the system and reduce the private debt. So 
basically the government, the central bank, mm. prints money to pay off people's debts? How, what I'm wondering is you yeah. say, write off debts, and, mm. you want, and it's basically private debt that you want written off. Yeah. Mortgages, companies, debt. How, how is it working? How is that working? It would be a process, we'd have to give the money to the debtors rather than to the creditors. If you look at what's happened in the last three or four years, all the rescues Bernanke have done and the banks around the world have done has been to give money, create money and give it to the banking sector in the belief the banking sector will lend to get the economy starting again. Now that is bizarre because we know one thing, reason they won't lend is they've lent too much already. So all that money has been ineffective. But who, so who are you giving the money to? I'm trying to get yeah, to, the, to the better I'd give solution. It, I'd be, I'd be, what, what you have to, do, what you would have to do, and it's not easy. It's not a simple thing. It's not something I can give a, a cartoon version of right now. It'd be very okay, sophisticated. Okay, but it's a working approach. model. Let's a just... working model. But the idea would be you would give the money to the public, and say, so, and if you, the public got the money, and the person who received it was in debt, the first thing I would have to do is pay their debt level down. They could not spend. So basically a government level. will say, look, we're not giving this extra money to the banks. We might even take back the money that we put into yeah. the banks. We're going to give it all, per, effectively per capita. If you have any debts, it has to go to that. That's right. It pays the debt down first of all. The reason that I, we have to do something like this rather than simply writing the debt off is that if you don't do, and you, you give money to everybody. It's a tax cut. Pardon? It's a tax cut. Uh, no. It's very different to create cutting a tax. If you give the money to everybody and then require those who are in debt to reduce their debt, then they're better off, obviously. But the complaint people make about a jubilee or a debt write-off is, what about me? I've saved money, I've bought bonds, exactly. I'm going to lose. It's the moral now, hazard argument. Yeah, it's basically, if, you're, you're rewarding failure. Yeah, but the thing is, the system has failed, not the individuals in it. And if we don't admit that, we're going to spend another 20 years in this grinding process. But, but you will you, have people running yeah. businesses who hear this and yeah. say, well, hold on a second. They'd I be have, getting the money I as well. Have been, but they've been managing themselves well. Their rival, who who was a badly run business mm. and should have gone out and the process of this yeah. of a recession would have weeded them out because they weren't well run they're going to get a, a boost too everybody gets a boost because we're not trying to boost individuals we're trying to eliminate a mistake of the financial sector that's been going on for 40 years it's the scale of what i'm talking about sounds extreme in contrast to normal policy but normal policy has allowed a 40-year build-up of the level of debt to simply unsustainable scales. And one of my colleagues, Michael Hudson, puts it beautifully, debts that can't be repaid won't be repaid. You simply have to work out how you don't repay them. This is, we have to have a sophisticated approach to eliminating a systemic level of debt should, that should never have been built up in the first place. Okay, so you give all this money to individuals mm. or companies, and mm. that, which mm. is, there's that measure of how you give to companies. They pay back to the banks who they loan to. Mm -hmm. uh, and you said if we keep the parasitic banking sector alive, the economy dies. Under your model, these parasitic banks, as you call them, would die? No. 